Fine. Okay, everyone. Hello and welcome to C1 week 11. What we're going to do is review contents from the subject of education today. Last week, we were looking at educational vocabulary and we spoke about education and training. And you can find the recording in unit three under week 10. You need to remember on Friday, we have class at 11 o'clock and also at seven o'clock. We actually recorded the class at 11 o'clock also. So I might include both of these recordings in the, in the thing. We'll see how it goes. Now, this week will be under week 11 in the recording. What we are going to do today is talk about the advantages and disadvantages of things. We're going to talk about the pros and the cons of things in English. You need to understand that pro and con, they are antonyms, the pro and the con. We have many synonyms of the pros of something. We can say the pros of, the advantages of, the benefits of, the upsides of. We also have many synonyms for cons. The cons of something, the disadvantages of something, the drawbacks of something, and also the downsides of something. You need to understand that they normally go together. This is why I have put them in this order. You will say, what are the pros and the cons of... <clears throat> What are the advantages and disadvantages of? Mm -hmm. It is strange to say, what are the pros and drawbacks of? We don't mix them. It sounds strange. They are synonyms, but it's strange. Pros with cons, advantages with disadvantages, benefits with drawbacks, and upsides with downsides, okay? What we are going to do is we're going to discuss the pros and the cons, the advantages and disadvantages of learning English. Now, Yolanda, when we do this type of conversation, why do we ask about the pros and the cons? Why do you think we do this? About uh, what subject? Well, about any subject. Why would I ask you what are the pros and the cons of? Uh, maybe uh, in order to to consider if if you are choosing uh, something, for example, uh, you consider uh, on a balance the pros and cons of that issue in order to choose to do um, something or not to do, for example. Exactly. This is the perfect word I was looking for, Yolanda. You said the perfect word, balance. I want a balance, meaning an equilibrio, of course, a balance between good points and bad points. Yeah? And this is why we ask this type of question. It is very common for C1 when you have a conversation or when you write an essay, okay? So we are going to discuss as a four, what are the advantages and disadvantages of learning English? So tell me please, uh, Clara, would you like to begin? Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, for, um, so on, honestly, honestly, I don't find uh, any disadvantage, uh, disadvantages for of learning English. I think that the most uh, thing uh, that you can uh, found is uh, all uh, benefits, like uh, you can 
uh, meet other people, uh, traveling, uh, um, having a, a better uh, job, uh, um, Mm. Okay, good. But remember, it's a conversation, Clara. It's a conversation, so you can ask a question. Ah, okay. I sorry. Uh, what's the name of uh, Santiago? Santiago. Yeah. Okay, Santiago. What do you think about uh, the pros and cons uh, about? Uh, learning English. I can see your point about the advantages being to speak with people uh, from another countries. Maybe you don't have a language in common, uh, so you can speak to them in English. We, so English is like a common uh, language for all the world. Maybe the disadvantages can be that uh, there there is um there is an um, general rule to speak english because there are a lot of um full friends or um yes this rule is uh, can be used uh, to speak this way but not the other way i don't know if you understand me yeah i understand you. yeah <laughs> Yeah. What's your view, Yolanda? Um, I find uh, one disadvantage of learning English uh, is, um, uh, for example, if you have uh, some level, if you want to maintain the, the level, you have to be immersed in the language in the same level, uh, because uh, otherwise, you you fall uh, in the in the same language uh, normal that you uh, talk with other people. Uh, it's the same not for English. I, I think it's it's uh, it's the same for uh, uh, other languages. Uh, if you don't practice uh, some words or some expression, don't use uh, all the language, uh, you forget that that um, expression. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think so too. Now, if you look at the advantages and disadvantages of learning English, well, you could talk about your time. Obviously, if you dedicate a lot of time to learning English, you do not have time to do other things, maybe. Maybe you could also talk about the obsession with English. In Spain, people are obsessed with English, but there are other languages that are also very useful. So maybe you could talk about that. Fantastic. So we were looking at the advantages and disadvantages. Now, what should you be doing? You need to practice talking about advantages and disadvantages on different topics. Now, I have a fantastic phrase for you, and I want you to tell me what it means. What does the pros outweigh the cons mean? Uh, the pros are um, have a more good points than bad points. Good. So there are more pros than cons. Now to outweigh is to compare, meaning there are more. So the pros outweigh the cons. There are more advantages than disadvantages. Outweigh, it's a verb, very useful verb for this topic. So if somebody asks you, what are the advantages and disadvantages of da da da, you say, well, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages because Fantastic. Now, what we're actually going to do is look at some rephrasing as an exercise. Now, I have some very useful vocabulary and grammar structures that will help us to talk about languages or education. We are going to review the rephrasing. 
then we are going to use these phrases in speaking. So, Sandhya, you need to read the first sentence. It is not worth learning Welsh. And read the second sentence. There, mm -mm, learning Welsh. And you need to try to say a sentence that means exactly the same thing. You yeah, must use the word no. And you must use three to six words. So, Santi, uh, Santiago, sorry. I don't know if you like Santiago. You can, you can use both. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just don't know if you like it or not. Yeah, so, Santiago, please, tell me. Um, there is no word left. Okay, so there is no word. So you want to use the same word, word. Now we normally just say not be worth. So we would use not because it's an adjective. So that wouldn't work. Clara, do you have any idea? Mm. No. Okay, you're not sure. What about you, Yolanda? You must use the word. There not. is not worth worthy uh, learning Welsh. Okay, so you want to say there is no worthy, like as a as a noun. Now, as a noun. Worthiness. There is no worthiness, worthiness. of learning worthiness. Welsh. Yes, that would work, but it's not the best answer. I will reveal the answer in one moment. Okay, Clara, number two. You need to follow the regulations. You must use the verb abide. And we have the phrase, you must, mm -mm, the rules. Do you know the phrase? Uh, using the word abide. Yes. You must abide the uh, rules. The rules. Okay, we're missing a preposition. Abide. Uh, mm -mm, have, have abide uh, to have, uh, sorry. You must have to abide rules. Okay, you must have to abide rules, okay? Now we need a preposition after abide. At, on, in, about, of, okay? A preposition after abide, it's a clue. Yolanda, do you know? It's the first time that I, uh, I, I see the word abide. <laughs> well, you are going to learn a new word today. Yes. Uh, it's gonna, so you're not sure if it's the first word you've seen it? Santiago, do you know the word abide? No, you, you must abide the rules, but... It's not correct, so I don't know. Hey, so you're not sure of the preposition, okay? We will review the preposition now. Now, to abide means to follow, but you need a preposition. We will see it now. Next one. It is a really urgent topic of discussion. You need to use the word pressing, okay? Now, Yolanda, it's your turn to go first. Mm. Good job. It is need of discussion. It is a pressing topic uh, that need we need no. It is a pressing topic. Okay, so it's a little bit difficult. Now, pressing does not collocate with topic. You need a synonym of topic. Santiago, do you know this one? Uh, is issue. Ah, issue, yeah. Issue. It is an issue, yeah. Do you know the answer, Santiago? What? Any idea of the answer? No, you're not there. Okay, don't worry. What about you, Clara? Any idea? No, I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's look at the answers and don't worry. This way we will improve. So let's see our answers. It is not worth learning Welsh. Now, not be worth doing something is no vale la pena hacer. Now, it is advanced because worth is an adjective. Casi siempre, después de un adjetivo, hay que poner ing, hay que poner el infinitivo. Sin embargo, con word se pone ing. Y si es regular, por eso es avanzado. So, it is not worth learning Welsh. No vale la pena o no vale la molestia aprender galés. 
No estoy de acuerdo, pero lo cuesta con frase. The phrase, the synonym is, there is no point in learning Welsh. Or there is no point of learning Welsh. And it means the same. Two, you need to follow the regulations. Regulations and rules are synonyms. So you must abide by the rules. Abide by means to follow. Now, Yolanda, this is the first time you've seen this word. It is a new verb yeah. for you, to abide by the rules. It is a formal way to say, follow the rules. Next one, please, Clara. It is a really urgent topic of discussion. We use pressing notice. It is a pressing issue. It reviews, it, it means an urgent topic, a pressing issue. Now we have a prepositional phrase, in need of discussion. In need of, it's a prepositional phrase. If you don't really understand prepositional phrases, things like at times, in order, these types of things, you should try to review the list of prepositional phrases on the course. Okay? So that was rephrasing. We have some new phrases. And we learn through our mistakes. We learn through our gaps in our knowledge. Now, we're going to use some of these phrases for speaking. First question, Santiago, I would like you please to answer. Do natives usually abide by grammar rules? Well, as far as I'm concerned, yes, they abide by grammar rules, but no, because uh, they, they know uh, which the rules are, uh, more than because it's the way they uh, have learned to speak since they are chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think many native speakers don't even really understand grammar rules personally, but, you know. Okay, what's your view on the topic, Clara? Sorry, what? What is your opinion about, ah. do natives usually abide by grammar rules? Uh, mm, no, maybe they abide by, uh, by grammar rules, but don't. Uh, understand all the connection, the 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 um, the, the the topic that you uh, learn in school, or the the grammar that you um, learn uh, when you are were a child in the school, and uh, after when you grow up, you forgot you uh, all uh, the rules. Uh, the specific uh, grammar. Yeah, and I think also languages evolve because especially young people, they manipulate language and they change phrases. Um, there are many phrases in Spanish that I hear people say that don't really make sense. Things like, uh, mi abrigo está detrás mío. Yeah? No, it's detrás de mí. But people do use it and it's not grammatically correct. Okay, next question for you, Yolanda. Do many natives have a poor understanding of their own language? I, I don't uh, think so. Uh, I, I think that uh, natives have uh, their own understanding of their own language. Mm, but uh, the use they mm, they do uh, the language uh, shape uh, as the environment that they they move around. As you say before, uh, uh, many young people. Uh, say um, a talk um, in a different um, way mm -hmm. that uh, the the language. I think it's the language is uh, um, 
it's live and uh, are um, moving. <laughs> But yeah. I, I think that they they have a, a good understanding of their their own language. I, I don't understand my daughter when the the when she is talking uh, about one issue. But I, I see that my daughter and my son uh, have a, a a good understanding of the issue that they are talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I have problems with this, especially listening to people who are maybe 18, 19, 20 years old. I can't really follow what they are saying. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Clara, you're going to answer. Would yeah. you say it is worth learning a minority language? Do you understand this phrase? Ma learning minority? Yeah, what is a minority language? Ah, uh, a language that uh, 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 when people talking uh, speak this uh, this language, uh, but in a, a little country. Yeah, it's normally a language that is not the principal language of a country. For example, in Wales, Welsh. In Ireland, Gaelic. In Spain, Catalan, yeah, uh, Galician, Valencian, you know, these are minority languages. Basque is a mi minority language in some regions. Yeah. It's not the principal language. So do you think it is a good idea to learn these languages? Is it worth doing it? Is Maybe it if your dream is living in this country, yes, but uh, uh, if uh, you have a global vision, vision or future vision, you have to, you should uh, um, learn in a, a, a language, a major, a, a the, what is the um, synonym now? The opposite of minority, majority. Yeah, majority language or principal language, the main language, yeah, the antonym. So if it's not necessary for maybe for your job, uh, for example, if you have to live in País Vasco and uh, in País Vasco required that you uh, speak in Basque uh, very well, uh, it's obvious that you have to learn this, but it's, if it's not necessary, I prefer st to study a uh, principal language like English in this case. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I would prefer definitely to uh, learn a language that many people speak because the idea of using a language is to practice it. Using it. Okay, Santi, what's your view? Um, I I agree with Clara because um, I think that is a waste of time to. Uh, learn a minority language if you don't live there. Okay. So, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. And do you have a view on the topic, Yolanda? Um, I think that uh, if you live in that country on, or if you need that language for work or for working in, in some issue uh, uh, you need to to learn that language uh, otherwise uh, i think it, it could be a waste of time uh, if you have if you have the opportunity to learn other languages uh, main languages yeah i see what you mean i think all languages are valuable, but there are some languages that are more valuable than others. I remember when I was deciding which language I wanted to learn, I decided on Spanish because many people speak Spanish. There's a huge population of people that speak it. That's one of the main reasons. Okay, Yolanda, your turn. Have you ever given up on a language you wanted to learn? 
Yes, mm, many years ago, uh, I strive uh, to learn uh, French, but uh, during the second year, uh, I had to give up uh, that language language uh, because um, um, I have a, a lack of time to do everything. Uh, and it was uh, because I appear um, in the classes uh, um, one person, a woman that in that um, eight, in that um, year, I think it was uh, twenty or twenty five years. Uh, how do you say more than me? Older than me. Older, older than me. And uh, that woman, it, it was uh, awful completely because uh, the class was only for, for her because yeah. she only speak that woman, uh, that woman, it was horrible for me and for, for many of of my mates in class that because of that uh, we um, we four of us uh, gave up that language ah, okay so quite a few of us gave up this language yes thank you Yolanda Clara what are the benefits of language learning well, yeah, uh, or language learning, yeah. So uh, you can improve your communication, you can talk in, to other people, uh, you can uh, travel uh, in a, a, a easier, or uh, you can uh, speak uh, every uh, everyone, uh, you can um uh, watch movies uh, in original version and uh, read books in original versions too too um uh, yeah this <laughs> yeah so there are many many things yeah definitely um i also think it is very good for your brain it's very good for your memory mm. it can help you to be active and be healthy yeah i think that's definitely one thing Santiago, is there any point in going over grammar structures? Mm. Well, I, I think that it can be useful for understand how a language is uh, formed. Mm -hmm. For example, in Spanish, I remember when I went to school to learn um, the complements of the phrases and that types of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think that it wasn't very useful, uh, but maybe for someone who is uh, learning a language, it can be uh, a great um, part of the understanding the language. Yeah, a great way to understand the language. Grammar is useful to improve your accuracy, la precisión, the accuracy of your language use. Yeah, I would say so. Clara, have you ever mastered a language and later forgotten it? Uh, no, I've never mastered a language. For example, I'm been well in Italian. I, I um, don't speak this language every day, but I don't feel like I forgot this, uh, it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because I remember you said you spoke Italian. Yeah, I remember you talking about yeah. it. Yeah, uh, for example, in English, uh, when, um, you you are uh, one week without uh, speaking, without speaking uh, English, yeah. uh, reading nothing in English or watching nothing, any films in, in English. Uh, maybe in one or, or two weeks, you can't lost 
a, a little. You can forget things. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I think consistency is really important in all languages because you do forget things if we don't. We're not consistent. Yeah, it happens. Okay. Uh, Yolanda, what are the drawbacks of being monolingual? Definitely a communication. If you only... Um, uh, um, no, uh, a language you you only can communicate between people uh, that speak the same language. You don't have the opportunity to speak uh, to other people uh, that um, have a different language. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Also, I think it can make people a bit narrow-minded what is narrow-minded yeah uh, it's when your mind is narrow <laughs> uh, in Spanish, of course, it just means to be a little bit ignorant or yeah. to not be very open yeah uh -huh. okay thank you now santiago what are the downsides of being a native english speaker Hey, that, that's a good question. I never thought about it. Maybe uh, if you are a native English speaker, you are you tend more to be monolingual uh, mm -hmm. because you are you are used to go to other countries and speaking English, and people normally can understand you. Yes, Diago, I think you are very astute and very clever because you have hit the nail on the head. That is the biggest disadvantage of being a native English speaker. Yeah, so maybe maybe it can, other languages. Yeah. It, it can shock you if you speak to someone in English and uh, he don't, doesn't understand you. So Exactly, yeah. You are the first person in all of the C1 course this week who has got this answer? Yeah. Um, yes, I found this when I wanted to learn German, when I wanted to learn Spanish. It was difficult to practice the language because most people can speak English better than I could speak in, uh, Spanish or German. Therefore, it was difficult to learn a foreign language. It is more difficult and you are more likely to be monolingual. Yeah, totally agree. Fantastic. So we've seen some questions all about this. What we're going to do is look at a monologue now. We're going to review a monologue. Now, we have a question. The question is, what are the pros and cons of being fluent in English? So what are the advantages and disadvantages of being fluent in English, meaning speaking English well? Now, you must give a balanced opinion. You can, of course, use the phrase, the pros outweigh the cons. You can use this, but you're going to give a monologue about it. Now, I'm going to give you an example that I have prepared. What you should do is you should ask yourself questions in an introduction and then simply answer your questions. For example, in this topic, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of being fluent in English. So what exactly are the advantages and disadvantages of speaking English well? Well, I am going to give you a balanced opinion on the issue. See, let me go like this. Here is what I have come up with. There are numerous benefits of being fluent in English. So many, in fact, that I am struggling to reduce them down to just a few. It goes without saying that English is the most valued language in the world and has the highest percentage of people 
who speak it as a second language. So much so that many dialects have emerged as a result of this. It seems simple to state that English is important. However, we must add a ba little balance to the argument and say that there are some drawbacks to this obsession with the English language. I would say that many other languages are undervalued and this may be detrimental to their spread around the world and it also makes them difficult to learn. Okay, so that's an example of a type of monologue, something I have prepared, obviously. What I want you to do is to prepare a simple answer of what are the pros and cons of being fluent in English. I would like you to speak for about one minute, maybe a little longer. And I simply want you to prepare an answer. So you are going to take it in turns to give a short monologue, okay? Right, I will give you one or two minutes to review People at home, you can pause the video and then you can watch uh, watch it. But we are going to take a look at this, okay? So what I would like us to do is, I would like us to take a look at this point, okay? Okay, thank you. So welcome back. What we are going to do is see how we can give this monologue. Do not make it complicated. Simply talk about which advantages and which disadvantages you think there are. So who would like to go first? Clara, Yolanda, Santiago, who would like to go first? Me, for example, yeah. I have okay. no problem. Thank you very much, Yolanda, very brave. So, speak for one to two minutes. Simply express your opinion. Yeah. Okay. I've been asked to talk about the pros and the cons of being fluent in English. Uh, first of all, I would say that English is considered as a main language uh, to communicate between people uh, so that being fluent in that language gives you the ability to read, watch uh, series or television and talk with people around the world. When it comes to talking about the cons, uh, the, the cons of uh, being fluent in English or learning English, uh, I would say that uh, there are so many variations uh, of the language around the world. Uh, for example, uh, the English that are uh, learning uh, Indian people uh, many times is uh, different from in expressions and other uh, and words from the English that uh, are, are learning uh, me, for example. Uh, but uh, uh, I believe that uh, the pros of being fluent in, uh, in, in English outweigh the cons of that uh, because uh, you are... Um, uh, they give you the that uh, the language give you the the freedom uh, to to read uh, articles of um, people around the the world. Thank you very much, Yolanda. It was very well presented. It is not easy with such little preparation. The important thing is to give a balanced opinion. Talk about the good things and the bad things, even if you think there are more good things. Okay, 
Santiago, would you like to have a turn? Okay, I'm going to talk about the disadvantages and disadvantages about speaking fluent in English. It is an a fair comparison because there are uh, so much uh, pros and cons. Uh, um, ah, okay. <laughs> the, the main advantage or speaking fluent in, in English is that it's a universal language. So you can go uh, where you where you want speaking English and people usually are going to understand you. Uh, that uh, is um, very common with another language, uh, especially if it's a minority language. The only uh, con I can think uh, can be uh, about a, a person who never have the opportunity to speak to learn English, maybe uh, it can be for them uh, they, they can feel that they are stupid, no, not because they are stupid uh, but also because they haven't got the opportunity to learn a second language mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be a sign of ignorance Dan, is that what you mean? Okay, conclusion so in conclusion, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, advantages of uh, uh, speaking fluently in English. So and we are here uh, to achieve that. Uh, I don't know how to say to to achieve that, that uh, goal, that objective, that objective. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Sandy. It was very well organized again. Um, and it was good. Yeah. Um, do we have any questions for Santiago about what he has said? No? Okay. Well, last but not least, it's your turn, Clara, please. Can you please give us your view on the topic? Yeah, uh, so I'm going to talk about the pros and ways cons. Um, in my opinion, uh, pros or benefits are more than uh, cons. Um, pros, uh, as I said um, before, uh, is um, you. Um, mm, sorry. Uh, English is the most spoken language in the world. Um, this language uh, uh, gives gives you the opportunity to communicate uh, to other people around the world when you travel or when you are working. Um, improve uh, improve your skill communication. Uh, open your mind, uh, etc. Um, understanding other cult cultures, and this for me, this is the pros and the the cons. The, the cons are uh, like um, the people uh, from uh, don't know uh, uh, America or United States that uh, them um their uh principal language is English, so they assume that you have to talk in English too. But uh, I see that, uh, for example, when they come in Spain, uh, maybe they uh, talk in English uh, more, uh, um, more no. They talk in English slowly, but for example, uh, I see that the French uh, people uh, don't uh, um, effort for uh, speak Spanish or English. Maybe uh, they want that you only speak uh, French with them. Yeah, but they don't make an effort. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this what happens a lot when you go 
to other countries. People in the UK can be very ignorant also. and They don't really make an effort to speak another language to other people. But I think this happens in many places. I imagine in Spain, in some places also, people do not make an effort to speak in in English when people should speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Thank you very much. It was very good. You included some of the vocabulary from today, for example, to outweigh. We should try to use phrases like, there is no point in, it is not worth, okay? It is a pressing issue. This type of advanced language is really going to help us, okay? When we want to have a conversation. Good. So that was the monologue. What have we seen today? Well, we have seen that we can use C1 level phrases to talk about learning languages. Review your notes. And I would like you to make sure you understand how to use these phrases in context. We have spoken about education. We have had an interview and we've also given a monologue. I would like you to review the questions, review the class, and make sure you can understand them in a fluent and express yourself in a fluent way. We also have looked at ways to sound more fluent in English. The ways to improve your fluency is to review the questions, anticipate your answer, and practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. It's the only way to improve, okay? So, thank you very much, everyone. Okay, uh, and that's it for today's class. Any questions? Uh, yes, Mark, next week, next Friday is, uh, holiday, is holiday week. No, week. it's not for me. No, we have class on Friday. Okay, we have okay. class, perfect. Yeah. We have class on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. There is no class on Wednesday because official holidays, I need to close. I don't have a choice, I must close. But the eighth, you know, supermarkets open, so it's not really an official holiday. Therefore, we are open. Okay? okay. Perfect. So, thank you very much. And that's it for today's class.